Hello, I hope you're well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video, which is probably the largest book haul that you will see on this channel ever. <laughs> um, I acquired an obscene number of books in a very, very, very short amount of time. I am slightly embarrassed by this. <laughs> I have like nearly 30 books here to talk about, but there were like contributing factors to this massive haul. Christmas, my birthday, retail therapy. My family was extraordinarily generous at gifting me books for both Christmas and my birthday. So quite a few of these are in fact from my family. And then as a tradition, I have always gifted myself a few books for my birthday, but I may have admittedly gone a little bit overboard because when Omicron decided to make its appearance and peak in New York, I decided I needed to change my birthday plans and I needed a little pick me up. So online book shopping was the answer. But basically, I have a lot of books to show you. So why don't we just dive right in? So, so I'm just gonna start by saying that this haul is literally all over the place. It is very representative of me. There is, of course, historical fiction, there's nonfiction, there are recent releases slash new releases, there are backlist titles, there are translations, there are just everything I love is here. And the first of the books that I'm going to talk about are the Christmas books. So the first of those books is The Slaughterman's Daughter by Yaniv Ikovitz, I believe. And it's actually a translated work from Hebrew, which I thought was interesting. And it is set in 19th century Russia. I know, I am totally predictable. I believe this book came out in 2020, though. And it's been one of these books that I've been really tempted by every time I've seen it on a book website or if I'm in the stores. It really, it was intriguing. So the premise is that this woman, Fanny, is the daughter of a ritual slaughterer. And she herself is quite handy with a knife, which is a good skill to have when she goes on some sort of adventure looking for something or someone. And it's supposed to be this like family saga. And it just sounds like it'll be an interesting time. What finally made me put it on my wish list was the fact that Alexandra Hobson, who has an Instagram account that is stunning. She takes beautiful photography. I live for her morning strolls with her dog, Grum. She mentioned this book in one of her like little wrap ups that she does on the things that she's reading. And she talked pretty excitedly about this book. So once she gave it the seal of approval, I knew I had to read it. So that's why I picked it up. The next book is Radiant by Liz Heinick. I am batting over for two with names today. I am so sorry. But this is a nonfiction book that I picked up because of what I thought would be a nice pairing with Radium Girls. I loved that book. It was one of my favorite books of 2020. And this is once again a book that is exploring radium, but it's looking at the relationship between Marie Curie and this Art Nouveau performer in Paris in the early 1900s. And the performer, I assume, was using radium to create these really like fantastical and hypnotic dances. And they apparently forged this like friendship because of their shared passion for radium. And so as someone who continues to read more and more about like the cultural impact of radium and just finds it really, really fascinating, I did think this would be a really good book for me. So this was on my Christmas list and I did get it, as you can see. <laughs> The next book is one that was actually an anticipated release for me in 2021. So I am very, very excited about getting my hands on it. It is The Widow Queen by Elizabeth Sharonzinska. And this is a, I believe it's the first book in a historical 
fiction trilogy and it's also translated from Polish. Katie from over at Katie Reads and Rants literally squealed when she saw that I had managed to get myself a copy because she really enjoyed this book when she read it. It is a like it feels like it's gonna have feminist vibes because the whole idea is that the main character is one of three daughters of a Polish duke who kind of just sees his daughters as pawns for alliances and that sort of thing and his daughter decides no that's that's not how this is gonna pan out and so it sounds like it's going to be absolutely fascinating it's also about a time period and a country that I don't know much about. So I am really intrigued by this. And considering that Katie had such lovely things to say about it, I think that I am in for a fun time here. So it, it's kind of chunky, I will admit that. But we also know I do love a good chunky book. So also very on brand. The next book was also from my lovely aunt. It is The Daughters of Yalta by Catherine Grace Katz. And this is one of these books that every time I went into the bookstore, I would see it, I would contemplate it, and for whatever reason, I wouldn't pick it up. But this is absolutely fascinating to me because it's about the daughters of Churchill, Roosevelt, and Harriman at the Conference of Yalta at the end of World War II in 1945. They went with their fathers. And so it's going to be, I think, about like their relationship with their fathers, but also what sort of impact they had on the Yalta Conference itself. And I love World War II history, and I know very little about these three women. So this is perfect for me. I stand this stuff. I love to see it. The next book is one that I put on my Christmas list because one of my subscribers had mentioned it. I think actually multiple subscribers have mentioned it to me. And to be honest, it sounded like something that was right up my alley. And that was The Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simons, another historical fiction set in Russia. You know I love to see it, but it's also supposed to be this like epic romance that I have actually seen compared to Dr. Zhivago. And I really do love an epic romance. I love it. I love tragedy. I love the drama. I love just all of it. I believe though that this is once again the first book in a trilogy, so I'm interested to see how I get along with this one. If I love it, I'm definitely going to pick up the other books in the series, so we'll see. But, but yeah, this just this speaks to me and thank you to my subscriber who recommended it to me. Okay, so the next two books are not ones that I think have ever appeared on this channel in any capacity, but they are the best American travel writing books for 2020 and 2021. These are books in a series that I have been collecting and reading for years. I think I go back as far as 2014 or 2015 and they are essentially collections of travel writing pieces that have been published online or in magazines and they are just wonderful for escapism, wonderful if you want to learn about different cultures and things and they are just truly inspiring to me. But for whatever reason they completely changed the look of these books. So for the last two years, I have been searching for them and literally passing over them on the bookshelf because they look nothing like the other ones I have. So when I discovered these, I had to get them. Unfortunately, from what I've been told or what I've heard through the grapevine, um, 2021 is the last edition of this that they are publishing, which is devastating, but at least I have these two to read and the other editions that I have to reread at my pleasure. So these are very exciting. I will report back. They're, they're great for someone like me who always suffers from a severe case of wanderlust. The next two books are books that I am intentionally pairing together, and they are I Am Madam X by Gia Diliberto 
and Strapless by Deborah Davis. And as you can see, it has the same Madam X painting by John Singer Sargent on the cover. And that is because they are both about the painting. So this is, sorry, ring light. This is a fiction and it is about the subject of the painting Virginie, which intrigues me. And then Strapless is actually a nonfiction about the painting and the controversy over this painting because of the strap. So I feel like this is something that will be nice to like read the nonfiction, then read the fiction afterwards. And also this came to my attention because Olive over at a book, Olive mentioned this book at some point and her recommendations are sound. So I figured why not, but yes. So now I have two books on this painting that I am very, very excited about. I don't know what I'm doing with my arms, ignore me. So yeah. <laughs> and the last set of books that I got for Christmas are all Russian focused. Shocking, I know. Um, but the first is The Unwomanly Face of War by Svetlana Alexeyevich, which I have gushed about on this channel. It was one of my favorite books of 2021. It is an oral history about Russian women during World War II and their contributions to the war effort and then what happens after the war itself. And I listened to this as an audiobook, but right after I finished it, I knew that I was going to want a physical copy because I knew that I was going to want to reread it. I knew that I was going to want to be able to annotate it and refer back to it over the years. And so I put it on my list and I'm very excited. This is one of these rare instances though that a book is much shorter than I anticipated. For some reason I thought this book was going to be quite chunky and it's actually a manageable size. So that is wonderful. I can't wait to reread this though and I feel like this book is going to in a few years time look a little bit worse for wear because of constant reading, use, and just love. So yes. Such a good book. Such a good book. And the last two books from the Christmas part of this haul, because I have a whole other set of books to talk about in a moment from my birthday, but literally the pride and joy of my Christmas loot were these penguin cloth bound editions of Leo Tolstoy's novels. This is War and Peace. This is Anna Karenina and they make me so so happy. I am constantly complaining about the fact that UK covers and UK editions of classics and modern classics, classics are just so much nicer than what we have here in the States, but I have never seen the UK like cloth bound editions of the classics in any bookstore here. But it seems like Barnes and Nobles is starting to carry them and they are very heavy. Um, and so when I saw that, I obviously wanted them ASAP. So that's what I got. Um, I've already showed off this edition in my over 30 book tag of Anna Karenina. This is one of three editions of Anna Karenina that I now own. Um, this is the second edition of War and Peace. And since I do want to reread this this year, this is probably the edition that I'm going to use, but I do also have a very worn mass market edition of War and Peace. That was the one I read over 15 years ago. I think now we're talking 16, 17 years ago. So, okay. So now we're talking about the books that I got for my birthday and quite a few that I ended up buying myself as well. It's really interesting for me to look at the books that I bought, that I got for Christmas and the ones that I got for my birthday because it shows like two totally different moods. Like my Christmas books were predominantly nonfiction, but with the books that I got for my birthday, it's predominantly fiction. So it ends up evening out, I guess, but it's just interesting for me to reflect on that. Maybe you don't care at all but I do find it fa fascinating. So the first of these books 
is Lear Wife by J.R. Thorpe, which was one of my anticipated releases for 2021. And obviously I was very excited about it. It's a Shakespearean retelling, which I seem to be in the mood for because I just finished and really enjoyed the Lindsay Fay book for Noelle's book club, the Hot Girl book club. And so this, this just seems to go along that same vibe. In this case, it is from the perspective of King Lear's wife, who doesn't appear in the Shakespearean play, so everyone kind of assumes she's dead. In fact, she is not. She's been tucked away in a nunnery, and this is her telling her story. I know that Charlotte has already read this, and I think she was kind of lukewarm about it, so I am slightly concerned, but I, I think the the lore of King Lear's wife is a little bit stronger than any apprehension I might have. So I am still looking forward to getting to this. And it also just has a really stunning cover. I love silhouettes. It, it's, it's a vibe. The next book I need to apologize in advance to my US subscribers for because it does not appear to be available in the US, which is why I ended up having to order it off Blackwell's in the UK. It's Cecily by Annie Garthwaite. This was another book that came out in 2021 that I was so, so excited about. And then I was so disappointed to find out that it's not available here. Thankfully, Blackwell's delivers to the US. And this is a story about Cecily Neville, who marries Richard Plantagenet. And it's all about her involvement and her sort of, I guess, influence on the War of the Roses in England. And that is a time period that I don't know a ton about, but I am also very fascinated by. And as I have said so many times on this channel, I love a historical fiction that introduces me to historical figures that I have never heard of, don't know what they accomplish. It just ends up sending me down a rabbit hole where I pick up nonfiction and try to learn more about them. So this is going to be fantastic. I was about to say fantabulous and fantastic at the same time, didn't work out. But it also has a stunning cover. Like, can we just appreciate the like stained glass effect and the way it says mother, wife, politician, traitor, survivor, fighter? Like, she sounds like a badass. I am here for it. The next book is one of the few nonfiction, as I said, in this birthday haul, but it is The Lady in Red by Hallie Rubenhold, who wrote The Five. I read it in 2021 and really enjoyed it. I think I gave it four stars. And this is a story that piqued my interest because she is the author, but also because there's a TV show with Natalie Dormer from, you know, Game of Thrones and the Tudors called the I think Lady W that is all about this scandal. So I want to read the book before I watch the TV series, but this is about Lady Worsley who has been immortalized in this painting of her in a red riding habit. But there's this whole scandal because apparently Lady Worsley takes a lover and then her husband finds out and decides to sue the lover. And then during the court case, all the like, kind of sordid details about their sex lives come to light. Things like their voyeurism and their arrangements and just all sorts of crazy stuff. And this is happening in the 18th century. So I want to know more. Like who doesn't love a good scandal? Like really? So yeah, I, I'm here for it. Never heard of this story before I'd heard of the TV show. So I, I will be reading this at some point soon. The next book is The Haunting Season, which I believe this is the UK edition because this was also in my Blackwell's order. Um, but this is a collection of like ghost or gothic stories set in the winter slash around Christmas. And the reason that I picked it up was because several of the authors who have stories in here are authors that I've read books by and enjoyed or authors that I'm interested in reading books by. So like Laura Purcell is here, Jess Kidd 
who we all know I love because of things in jars. Um, and also Kieran Millward Hargrave, whose book I have, The Mercies, and have been really trying to read that book for the last year or so and just have never managed to get around to it. But I do love a good spooky story. This, unfortunately, is probably going to be one of those books that I hold on to until next December because it does feel like that's kind of the time of year when this should be read. And full disclosure, I am not someone who reads a lot of short stories, but I think because of the authors here and the theme slash tone, I was really interested. So you'll probably see this on our TBR towards the end of 2022. The next book is Dubliners by James Joyce. This is a gorgeous, and when I say gorgeous, I mean stunning, centennial edition. And the moment I saw it, I wanted it. I also thought that it was a graphic novel or that they had some graphic novel element to it, which it kind of sort of does in the flaps within the covers themselves. It's on the front and it's also on the back. I thought that was a nice little touch. But James Joyce and I, I read The Dead, which is a story in Dubliners in high school, and it was mesmerizing. And I don't know if it was mesmerizing because my teacher, Ms. DeCenso, read it to us and had this like soothing voice and she fangirled James Joyce so much that like her passion for it was just you it was palpable you could feel it but ever since then I have said that I should really read the entirety of Dubliners which is again a short story collection and have just never gotten around to it but this this edition just really really spoke to me also I want to read this. I want to become better acquainted with James Joyce because at some point I would really like to read Ulysses. And that is quite a book. It is slightly intimidating. I don't know why that intimidates me more than like War and Peace and Anna Karenina, but it does. Um, but this just, it was great. It looks great and I will get to it at some point. <laughs> The next book is one that I picked up because I just recently read a book by the author and really enjoyed it and so I wanted to give some of her other backlist titles a shot. The book is Dragonwick by Anya Seton and this was the one that stood out for me from her other books because it's actually set in the area that I live. It's set in the Hudson Valley in the 19th century. and. From the description, this young girl ends up going to stay at Dragonwick, which is like this gothic manor house, and just things ensue. The words that I've seen were passion and also mystery and like really what more could you ask for? And I really did enjoy Catherine by Anya Seton. It was it was definitely written in a different style from the historical fiction that comes out today, but it also just felt really well researched and the characters were enjoyable. So considering that these are all fictional characters, she's not trying to actually like tell a historical story, I'm intrigued and curious to see how that all pans out. But the setting of the book definitely caught my attention. The next book is Testament of Youth by Vera Britton, which is a World War I memoir. Now, I have had this on my wish list since I watched a movie with Alicia Vikander and, oh my god, Kit Harington, I believe. And it was based on this memoir. And I found her life so fascinating that I ended up wanting to actually get the source material the memoir itself and read it. I did not expect it to be as chunky of a memoir as it is, but I'm here for it. Um, so Vera Britton was an Oxford student 
and she ends up becoming a nurse in World War One, and basically loses all the men that she has loved over the course of the war. It is a heartbreaking story. I sobbed through parts of the movie. I'm anticipating that I will sob through parts of the memoir, but this is just up my alley. It's something that I am really drawn to historically, the stories of women living during wars and revolutions and that sort of thing. And from what little I know about Vera Britton, her life was extraordinary. So that is why I ended up getting it for my birthday. The next two books were gifted to me by my sister. They are actually the two next books in the Regeneration trilogy, and they are The Eye in the Door and The Ghost Road, which is Pat Barker's Booker Prize winning book. And so, as I mentioned, these are books two and three in the trilogy. And I just recently read Regeneration and spoiler alert for my January wrap up, it was five stars. I absolutely loved it. It is a World War One story from a totally different perspective than anything else I have read previously. The whole premise of it is that this psychiatrist is supposed to make men better so that he can send them back to war because they have been brought from the front lines because they are suffering from shell shock or PTSD as we call it. And it seems like he starts to question whether or not that is something that is morally like correct to do. And there's all this, these characters with these heart wrenching stories of what they've gone through in World War One, and also looking at like being a conscientious objector and all that sort of thing. And I am here for it. The moment I finished that book, I knew that I wanted to get my hands on the next two books in the series. So I told my sister this is what I wanted for my birthday and she delivered. But yes, we all know I stand Pat Barker at this point. So I am looking forward to continuing this trilogy. The next three books are those books that I call modern classics because they're written in like the first half of the 20th century. And as I said earlier in this video, the UK just does book covers for those books better. The first of them is Muriel Sparks, The Prime of Miss Jean Brody. I really don't know all that much about this book other than it is about an unconventional schoolmistress, but I do know that Maggie Smith played Jean Brody in a movie many, many years ago when she was a downright fox. So <laughs> I am interested in reading it partly for that, but partly because I do love a modern classic. The next book is The Pursuit of Love by Nancy Mitford, which is again a situation where I wanted to get the book so that I could read it before I watched the TV show, because there is a TV show with Lily James, I think on Amazon Prime. But I am also really fascinated by the Mitford sisters. If you don't know who they are, look them up because they are wonderful. They, they're just fascinating individuals. But I've never actually read anything by Nancy Mitford. And so I wanted to correct that. I don't know a ton about this book. But from what I do know, it's about these two young women who were like, on the search for the perfect lover. And I think hijinks ensues. So it just sounds like it's going to be quite funny and entertaining. And what's not to love about that? We're down to the last three books, but the next book is The Light Years by Elizabeth Jane Howard. Now, this is a slightly different situation because I have watched the TV series and was very upset to find out that there was only ever one season produced because it was enjoyable. It was Hugh Bonneville and Leslie Manville and just a wonderful cast of British actors and actresses. But this is like a family saga and is the first book in a series. And it's about the Cazalets 
and they're living just before the outbreak of World War II and then through World War II. I don't know how many books are in the series, to be quite honest. I, this was also another book that I did not anticipate being quite as chunky as it actually is. But you know what? After reading the Outlander series, I realized that I kind of need another series in my life. So I feel like I have quite a few that I am intrigued by. This one, Regeneration, um, well, I'm blanking, but Regeneration, this one, and whatever other series I have in the works currently. Oh, the other Pat Barker series that I'm trying to get copies of but don't seem to be in print or don't seem to be in print in the US. So that'll be an adventure. But I love a good family saga. I like fiction set during the wars. I like it when it feels slightly different from what I'm accustomed to. And just based on the many characters that were in the TV series, I feel like this is a book that I could potentially really, really enjoy. So we'll see how I get along with it. If I get along with it, then I will get the other books in the series. We'll see. Only time will tell. The next book is another book that Charlotte and I have in common. She actually just had it in her like physical TBR video. And that is Gentleman Jack by Angela Steidel, which is the biography on Anne Lister, who, according to the back, Lister was a Regency landowner, an intrepid world traveler, and an unabashed lover of other women. And so this is using her diaries to craft a biography. She sounds absolutely fascinating. I do believe there is a TV show. Yes, according to the cover, there is a TV series called Gentleman Jack based on this as well. I would be very interested in watching that. But yet again, this is a situation where I'd love to read the book first. So Charlotte, if you're watching this, buddy read perchance, let me know. The next book and the last book, yes, we are finally at the end, is the very chunky A Girl is a Body of Water by Jennifer Nansabuga Makumbi. And this is a book that honestly, it was a good thing that I saw the UK edition because the title, whatever it was on the UK edition, definitely caught my attention far sooner than this one. This is in fact the US edition though. The story sounds really fascinating. It's about a young girl living in Uganda and it's based on like Ugandan folklore and seems to really center around the women in her lives and just women in general. But I think what really got me was this line on the back that says that the main character is helped to understand the emergence of a mysterious second self, a headstrong and confusing force inside her called the first woman, an independent original state that has been all but lost to women. So I feel like this is going to have like some really striking feminist vibes and I do find that the like setting of Uganda and the focus on like the folklore of Uganda is going to make this very very unique. So I'm actually hoping to read this in February during Black History Month. So yeah this sounds absolutely mesmerizing which is not one of the words on the back but they are all synonyms. Irresistible, glorious, oh no, here's mesmerizing from, oh, the Oprah magazine. Tender, exhilarating, riveting, captivating, a wonder. It, it sounds like it's gonna be great. So I'll report back. So yeah, that is the massive, massive, massive book haul that I have waited the better part of January to film. Today is January 21st and I kid you not, the last two books only got here yesterday. I ordered them on New Year's Day. So it has been a wait for those final books to come through, but I am genuinely, genuinely excited for all of these books to the point 
that it is almost paralyzing. I want to read them all like tomorrow, but obviously not possible, not humanly possible. So I have to be patient and that is not my strong suit, but I am sure that you will start to see these books in TBRs and in wrap ups in the very near future. In the meantime, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe because those things help this little channel grow. And it means the absolute world to me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!